Hello and welcome back. Today, let's think of a phone book where names are matched with their respective phone numbers. Imagine having a way to store and look up this information quickly and efficiently. In Python, dictionaries do just that, organizing data into key value pairs. Let's get started. First, let's quickly recap what we covered in our last session. We explored lists, a powerful data structure for storing sequences of items. Lists allow you to easily add, remove and modify elements and loop through them to perform operations on each item. If you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend checking it out. And don't forget, if you took the quiz, the answers are in the description. Creating a dictionary in Python is quite simple and intuitive. You start by listing key value pairs within curly braces. Each key serves as a unique identifier and each value is the data you want to associate with that key. Think of it like a real-world phone book, where a name, the key, maps to a phone number, the value. This is how you do it. In this example, Alice, Bob and Carol are our keys, representing names and next to them are their corresponding phone numbers. Notice how each key is linked to its value using a colon and each key value pair is separated by a comma. This makes dictionaries incredibly useful for storing related pieces of information together. Remember, keys must be unique in a dictionary. If you try to add a key that already exists, Python will overwrite the existing value with the new one. For instance, if we add another entry for Alice to our context dictionary and then print it, the previous phone number for Alice will be replaced with the new one. The values can be of any data type, allowing you to store not just strings, but also numbers, lists or even other dictionaries. To retrieve a value from our dictionary, we simply use its key. For instance, in our contacts dictionary, if we want to get Alice's phone number, we write contacts Alice. This will return the number. But what if we try to access a key that doesn't exist? Using the brackets notation like contacts Dave will result in an error because Dave isn't a key in our dictionary. To avoid this, we can use the get method, which allows us to safely access a key's value. If the key doesn't exist, it returns none, instead of causing an error. For example, contacts get Dave will return none since Dave isn't a key in our dictionary. This makes the get method a safer way to access dictionary values, especially when you're not sure if a key exists. Now if you want to see all the keys or all the values in your dictionary, Python provides a couple of handy methods keys and values. The keys method returns a view object containing all the keys in the dictionary. It's useful when you want to check which keys are present. Similarly, the values method returns a view object containing all the values in the dictionary, which is helpful if you want to see all the phone numbers, for example. Using this method gives you a quick overview of the dictionary content and helps you understand what data is stored in it. Dictionaries are incredibly flexible, allowing you to add, update and remove data with ease. Let's start with adding a new key value pair. In our context example, if we want to add a new person, say Dave, with a phone number, we simply assign the value to a new key like this. Now Dave is part of our dictionary. Updating an existing entry is just as straightforward. Let's say Alice has a new phone number. We can update our entry by reassigning the value. This will overwrite the old number with the new one. If we need to remove an entry, we use the Dale keyword. For example, if Bob is no longer in our context, we write this. This completely removes the Bob entry from the dictionary. Lastly, if you ever need to clear all entries from the dictionary without deleting it entirely, you can use the clear method. This empties the dictionary, leaving you with an empty structure ready to be filled with new data. Managing data with dictionaries is intuitive and efficient, making them an essential tool for organizing information in Python. Dictionaries become even more powerful when we start iterating over them. Suppose you want to go through each contact in our dictionary to loop through just the keys, essentially the names, you can use a simple for loop like this. This loop will print out all the names in our dictionary. But dictionaries are more than just keys. If you want to iterate over all the values, in this case the phone numbers, you can use the values method. This will print out each phone number stored in the dictionary. Now, what if you need both the names and the numbers? This is where the items method comes in handy. 
It allows you to work with both the keys and their corresponding values at the same time. This loop gives you full access to both the keys and their corresponding values, making it easy to perform more complex operations or simply display the information in a structured format. This versatility is what makes dictionaries incredibly useful for a wide range of tasks, from data organization to complex data processing. Another way to iterate over a dictionary is by using the keys to access their corresponding values directly within the loop. For instance, you can loop through each key and then use it to print the associated value. In this loop, name represents each key in the dictionary. By using context's name, we can print out each phone number one by one. This method is straightforward and allows you to access both the keys and values without using values or items. This approach is particularly useful when you only need to work with values in the context of their keys, keeping your code simple and readable. While values and items offer more flexibility, looping directly through keys. Let's build a practical example using dictionaries by creating a simple contact list. This program will allow us to add, update, view and remove contacts interactively. We'll use a dictionary where each key is a person's name and the value is their phone number. To make it a bit more interesting, we'll use some string methods to process user input. Let's get started. First, we'll define our contact list as a dictionary. We'll begin by adding a couple of entries. This will give us some initial data to work with. Next, we want our program to run continuously, allowing the user to add, view or delete contacts until they decide to exit. That's why we start with a while true loop. Now, you might recall from our previous lesson that using while true can potentially lead to an infinite loop, if not handled properly. However, in this case, it's intentional because we want our program to keep running until the user decides to exit. Later on, we'll use a break statement to safely exit the loop when needed, ensuring we don't end up with an infinite loop. When adding a new contact, instead of asking first for the name and then the phone number, we'll ask for both in one line, separated by a space. This allows us to use string methods to split the input into the name and the phone number. For example, the user might input a name and a number and we'll use the split method to separate it. For updating a contact, we'll prompt the user for the contact's name and the new phone number. If the contact exists, we'll simply update the value associated with that key. If the user tries to update a contact that doesn't exist, we'll handle it gracefully by informing them that the contact is not in the list. Removing a contact is straightforward as well. We'll ask for the name of the contact they want to remove and delete that key value pair from the dictionary. If the contact isn't found, we'll let the user know so they're aware that no changes were made. We'll also add an option to view all contacts. This will involve iterating over the dictionary and printing each key value pair, giving the user a quick overview of their entire contact list. Lastly, we have the exit option, which uses the break statement to exit the while true loop, ending the program gracefully. This approach gives us a control over the loop, ensuring it only runs as long as necessary. This interactive contact list program is a great way to practice using dictionaries, loops and string methods. It shows how dictionaries can be used to organize and manipulate data. Let me give you a challenge. Try adding more features like searching for contacts by part of their name or exporting the contact list to a file. Give it a try and see what improvements you can make. Let's put your knowledge to test with a quick quiz on dictionaries. Question 1. How do you create an empty dictionary in Python? Which method will you use to safely access a key that might not exist in a dictionary? If you want to add a new key value pair to a dictionary, which of the following syntax is correct? How do you remove an item with a specific key from a dictionary? What does contact get Charlie return if Charlie is not a key in the context dictionary? And that wraps up our journey into dictionaries in Python. Now it's your turn to put these concepts into practice. Experiment with dictionaries in your own projects. The more you use them, the more versatile and powerful they become in handling various tasks. If you have any questions, insights or challenges you'd like to share, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe 
and keep an eye out for the next video. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next dimension.